Okay, this is part one of two. Um, the goal of this is for people that currently have Ruto blogs, if you want to try to compile it with Desi, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, first of all, if you don't have IOJS or Node.js installed, you can search IOJS install script. And then I've got two options here. One that will install it along with uh, checking and installing for de developer tools like Xcode and Build Essential and that kind of thing works both on uh, Mac and Linux. And then there's the minimal install that just installs IOJS but figures it out, you know, whether you're on uh, Mac or Ubuntu, it just does the right thing. Um, so I'll show you how to install Desi from the command line here. You just do npm install dash d g desi takes a moment and I'll clear my screen um, and then I'm just going to create a new blog so it's easiest and best if you just initialize um, a new directory and it'll copy the template and the default configuration as well as a couple of themes that are actually just copied from Ruto uh, so I'll go into that directory now and let you take a peek at it. So the it's it's important to start with the default directory and then copy your files over. So I'll show you how to finish the configuration because obviously the defaults aren't complete. Um, and then we'll move some posts over. So I'm going to do desi serve from the blog directory. And then I'll just copy this address. And I'll replace my current URL with the local Desi, which is slightly different from the website, different theme, and um, now instead of take the tour, it's get started, but it's the same software. So I'm going to put in the minimal information, which is name, handle, and email. And save and continue. And then the minimal information here. Just title and description and URL. So the URL, um, this is the production URL, but since I'm doing this demo, I'm just going to run it from Desi. Desi will also serve the compiled directory. Um, note that although this directory, this output directory, and the URL both say compiled, they're not related. Um, it's just that it Desi serves up the compiled directory as well as the compiled dev directory. So compiled dev does have compiled dev as the base path, whereas um, in the production one, I'm using compiled as the as the base path because it matches, and so the static file server just has a one-to-one -one correlation. But um, there's no correlation other than that. So I'll just save and continue here, and then I'll make uh, a dinky post blah 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 cats 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 meow oh, well that was not the key I meant to hit but it works and then you can see the markdowns right here it creates the permalink for you so that in the future if you change your permalink style you won't lose your SEO um, there's also a redirects option that I'll talk about in part two and um, just for funsies I'm actually going to specify the theme so I'll do Ruto Twitter. And then you can see here it shows the actual source path on disk, the output path on disk, and then the links in case you just want to quickly copy and paste to a gist or a wiki or something. All right, so that's saved. And now I can build the development site. So that's built. You can see I'm here at my dinky post. And now I'll build the production site. And you can see that that works as well. Um, although, you know, normally there's a different URL. Like I do blog.collegi6.com. I don't have a base path, or rather the base path is just slash. Uh, anyway, so now it's built. So you see it's working. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to background this. So control Z and then BG to background it. And I'm just going to copy over directly from my unadulterated Ruto blog, copy all the posts over. And then this time, instead of uh, building it in the browser, I'm going to do Desi build um, the command line utility. Now, Desi runs completely in the browser. 
the command line utility is completely separate. The only thing that the browser does, uh, that I mean, the only thing that happens with Desi that isn't in the browser is that it has to read files and save files. So that's done through a very small, thin um, node file server. And then the, the node app uses the browser code. So this was built browser first. Um, the the de design goal there is so that um, unlike Ruby where every time it updates, like everything breaks, it's JavaScript. It can update all at once. Backwards compatibility is like always the number one priority on the web. So no matter how much it's upgraded, it's pretty much guaranteed to always work. Anyway, so that's built. Um, and then I can refresh here and look at the archive. Uh, oh, whoops, I'm at the wrong one. Let me go to the production one. And you can see there, because the command line tool only builds for production, there's all my posts. Everything came in without a problem. If there was a problem, I would have gotten an error message for the post that was a problem. So if something didn't parse or, or whatever, I'd get an error message for that. Um, and that's nice. Now, next, you can copy over a theme. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll show you the config.yaml. And here we have collections. This is just the default. And then you can change it. You know, if your folder isn't called posts, you want to call it something else, you can change it. Themes, I actually group under the themes folder. So you have to move your themes in under there. And then because different uh, themes have different defaults, you specify what the defaults are here. There are no default or built-in defaults in, um, in Desiree, the underlying library that, that Desi's built on. And then assets, the default is media, but you know if you use a different folder, you should be able to change that. Um, and, and then in site is where you specify which of the available themes you want to use as the primary theme. So I'm going to switch this to be Bootstrap 2. And you can see the title was put in here as well as the description. And then that URL was parsed out into base URL and path. The navigation is currently automatically read. So anything that isn't the index file that's in the root folder will be read. I only have archive right now. Um, but you could you know, add as many as you want. And if you want to be explicit and only allow some of them, that's when you do the list here, like archive, etc. OK, so I'm going to save that. And let's see, the only other thing we've changed so far is the authors file was created with the handle coolage86. Um, and let's see, is there anything else to talk about in here? Compile directory, compile dev, media is where assets go. Uh, posts and themes. So I think we've kind of covered that all. So I'm just going to rebuild again and let you see. Now it's got the new theme, but Dinky Post, where I specified the theme, still has the old theme. So that's kind of neat. If you want to do like a Christmas article or a themed article, you could have a separate theme, keep it in your themes folder, and then everything else is uh, the, the normal theme. Um, last thing to show you in this video is that you can also create new posts from the command line as well. So yeah, I'll just go with my new post. And then just like in the browser, you get some nice friendly output that is the links you could copy and paste, and then the directory where it's been created um, creates the YAML for you, creates the permalink for you and the UUID. I didn't mention that before, but it creates that for you. That's what's used with your discus comments or discuss or however you want to pronounce it, as well as other plugins that need a UUID per post. So that again, you're not reliant on the URL for those those plugins that can take an ID. Um, and oh, and I was going to show you. So if I build, I get an error. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to root out these long, nasty error messages, but usually should be at the top of every, every uh, error. It will tell you what operation failed. So lint failed, and it failed on posts, my new post, and it failed because it's um, empty content. So if we go back to that, it's warning you to let you know, hey, you created a post, but you didn't actually put anything in there. So now if I actually put something in, go to run it again, it builds. All right, so that's part one. We're done here. Uh, next part will be how to dig in a little bit deeper because most likely you've customized your theme. There's going to be some things, uh, some variables that don't map up. And part two is going to show you how to do that. 
If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top. Give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.